How U.S. Aircraft Carriers Handle Onboard Disasters Imagine a big city, but it's floating on the sea. That's what an aircraft carrier is like. There are thousands of sailors living and working really close to each other on this huge ship. Now, because it's out in the ocean, it's kind of like a sitting duck. If an enemy attacks, the whole carrier could be in big trouble. But even without enemies, accidents can happen, like fires or things breaking, because of mistakes people make. Since there are so many people on board, it's like a big target for bad stuff to happen. But don't worry, behind the scenes there are super smart doctors and nurses, and they're ready for anything bad that might happen. But what if something really bad happens, and they can't help someone on the ship? Well, they have plans for that too. It's like a big team effort to keep everyone safe, even in the middle of the sea. But what exactly do they do? What are the tricks of handling onboard disasters? Let's find out how U.S. aircraft carriers handle onboard disasters. Aircraft carriers are like the kings of the sea because they're the biggest and most important ships in a Navy. They're like the headquarters for a whole fleet of ships and airplanes. With an aircraft carrier around, a Navy can send planes to fly over any part of the world, ready for action whenever they're needed. These carriers are packed with all the stuff planes need to fly, like all types of treatment facilities. They can also help with things like rescue missions or showing off a country's military power. So, when something bad happens on an aircraft carrier, like an accident or an attack, things get really crazy at first. But even in all that chaos, there's a plan in place to save lives. That's the most important thing, because nowadays aircraft accidents are happening in large numbers. This cohort study assessed reports from the ship's safety department and medical department during two trips that lasted six months each. They found a total of 291 injuries during the first trip and 412 injuries during the second trip. That's a lot of injuries. It's like, imagine if someone got hurt every day for six months straight. Now, when they compared this to how many people were on the ship, they figured out that for every 10,000 days a person was on the ship, there were about three to four injuries. That might not sound like a lot, but it's more than what's usual in other jobs in the US. And guess what caused most of the injuries? Slips, trips, and falls. So this is why they always need to be prepared for handling these kinds of cases. As soon as something goes wrong, everyone's focus is on keeping people safe. They use all the resources they have to find the injured, help them, and make sure they're okay. There's a clear chain of command, which means everyone knows what they need to do and who's in charge. The heroes of the medical response are called corpsmen. They're like super skilled first aid experts who are spread out all over the ship. They're the first ones to get to the scene and start helping people right away. Then there are nurses and medical officers who manage everything. They decide who needs help the most urgently and make sure everyone gets the care they need. And there are surgeons too, who are like the top level doctors. They do really important surgeries to save lives. Also, there can be emergency cases like war. Triage is when doctors and nurses quickly look at all these people and decide who needs help the most urgently. They do this by sorting them into different groups based on how badly they're hurt. They use colors or other ways to show how bad the injuries are. Like someone with really serious injuries might get a red tag, while someone with less serious injuries might get a yellow tag. This way, the doctors and nurses know who to help first. They focus on the people who are in the most danger and need help right away. It's like making sure the most critical cases get help ASAP. Now, here's something really cool and kind of intense. Sometimes big ships can turn into hospitals. Like, they can change parts of the ship into places where they can take care of the injured people. Even places like the hangar bay and where people sleep can be turned into medical areas. On an aircraft carrier, 
there are these super skilled doctors called orthopedic surgeons. The medical department is one important part of this organization. First off, all the heads of different departments on the ship report to the big boss, the commanding officer. They tell the commanding officer about what's going on with their specific area of work. For medical stuff, they talk to the commanding officer through the executive officer. The ship's surgeon is another doctor, but this one specializes in surgery. They're in charge of dealing with any surgeries that need to happen and making sure the operating room is ready to go. Then there's the general medical officer, GMO. They're like the doctor you'd see for a regular checkup. They look after the sick and injured crew members and make sure they get the right treatment. The medical administrative officer, MAO, helps the SMO with all the paperwork and stuff to keep the medical department running smoothly. Nurses, physician assistants, clinical psychologists, and physical therapists all have specific jobs too. They help with different parts of taking care of the crew, like giving medicine, doing therapy, or talking to people about their feelings. And don't forget about the chief hospital corpsman and other enlisted personnel. They're like the boss of all the medical crew members. They help with training and making sure everything's running well. There are also some rules about who can work in the medical department. People who want to be part of it have to go through special training and pass some tests to make sure they know what they're doing. But here's the thing, even though these medical teams are amazing, there's only so much they can do on a ship. The space is pretty small, so sometimes they can get overwhelmed with too many patients. If someone's really sick or hurt badly, they might need to be taken to a big hospital on land for more help. Once they decide to evacuate, time becomes super precious. They have to make sure the injured person is as stable as possible for the trip and that they can communicate well with the hospital they're going to. Every minute counts in situations like this, so they've got to move fast and make sure everything's in place for a safe evacuation. It's all about getting the person the help they need as quickly and safely as possible. When something bad happens, like a big accident, it can leave deep scars on people's minds. They might feel really scared, sad, or traumatized. It's not easy to deal with. But here's the thing. The ship where this accident happened has people who can help. They have chaplains and counselors who are there to listen and support everyone who's feeling upset. And you know what else? They practice drills regularly. It's like practicing for an emergency. This helps everyone feel more prepared and confident if something bad happens again. Plus, it brings everyone together as a team, which can make a big difference in tough times. The crew of the ship doesn't give up. Nope, they work super hard to fix everything and make it right again. They have special teams called damage control teams who work really, really hard to repair any damage and clean up any mess. Now, even though things might be tough and some people might feel sad or scared, the sailors and marines on the ship stay focused. They work together to make sure the ship is ready to go back to doing its job as soon as possible. And you know why they do it? Because they want to make sure everyone is safe and that the ship can keep doing what it's supposed to do. It's like they're saying, we won't let this stop us. So when a ship can get back to doing its mission, it's not just about fixing things. It's also about showing respect to the people who got hurt and making sure their sacrifice means something. It's pretty inspiring, don't you think?